Okay, hello all you people out there. This is Michael Two and Half Huge, and welcome back to another Game Maker basic sort of lesson type thing. That sounded so unprofessional it wasn't even funny. Anyway, so um, another Game Maker basic tutorial lesson, and uh, once again, as I like to put this disclaimer over every video I make, this will work in both Game Maker 8.1 and Studio, and both the free and the paid versions. So <clears throat> let's see. If you run the game that I set up last time, I'm going to minimize that because that's distracting. Uh, there's this blue circle and you can move it around with the arrow keys and it doesn't really do much if you were to click on it, it would give you a silly message um, now I guess the next logical step would be making solid walls and stuff and that's what I'm gonna be doing here so I'm gonna make another sprite so it's gonna be uh, brown because um, brown sort of indicates wall or it sort of looks like one anyway and I'm going to be going uh, that looks like this mm, let's make that a bit of a lighter brown uh, that's gonna be the wall and we are going to make an object. This is going to be wall, or object wall, if you want. Um, and the sprite is going to be brown. It doesn't do anything. Um, you may notice this thing solid there, that, op that option. I'm not going to be doing that. Game Maker does have some built-in solid object uh, functionality, but I don't think it works very well. And if you want to make a complicated game, you're definitely going to want to be getting away from that um, because it's very basic. Now, in this room here, let's go and place a couple wall tiles there, and we'll be... Uh, enclose this this uh, circular character in a nice box there. So if you were to move around, you can go through the walls. You specifically go behind them. Um, I will probably be going into more detail later with that, with the draw depth and how to make the, uh, the circle pass in front of them if you wanted to too. But uh, we're going to have to write some code here, obviously. <clears throat> I hope it's obvious anyway. Uh, in here, in the step event, uh, when you hit the keys, it doesn't ask any questions, it just moves. It doesn't ask to. Um, it doesn't ask the game if there's anything in the way. Uh, nothing like that. It just moves. So what we want to do here is we want to say um, within the, uh, the keyboard check if uh, not place meeting, and we want to say x. What is it? X minus four uh, y uh, and wall. Yeah, there we go. And um, once again, curly braces. Don't really need them there, but it probably makes the code a little more readable. Uh, X is going to minus equal 4. All right, so I just copied and pasted there and changed the appropriate variables and the appropriate locations. Let's run the game and see what happens. So, OK. It, uh, it stops at the wall. It can't go through. Uh, you can move along the side of it, but you can't, uh, you can't pass through it. And that is wonderful. Now, to explain this a little bit, um, I'm going to guess that most people are smart enough to sort of, by this point, uh, see what's going on, but I'll go into it somewhat in detail anyway. So, this function here, this is another function that also returns true or false, and it is going to look at the position, the pixel on the board, this position right here, and it's going to look to see if there is one of these wall objects sitting there. and. If there is, it will return true, but we don't want it to return true. We don't want to move only if there is a wall in the way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use this little operator, the exclamation point, and that is a binary negation operator, and that's going to turn true values into false. Stop banging on the window, and it will turn false values into true. So uh, once again, I believe I've referenced this in the uh, the last video. If you are, are familiar with, reg with redstone uh, logic gates in Minecraft, this is rather similar. Uh, except it doesn't take up physical space, it's just uh, running a code and it's instantaneous. All right, and the same for the rest of these. If there's a place uh, four spaces ahead of you or below or above or whatever it happens to be, then it'll do that. And then uh, <clears throat> once again, uh, you can you can do this. So this is also rather basic. Um, it will be getting more complicated than this, but for a lot of basic purposes, this is good enough. Uh, it doesn't use anything with the uh, this solid object checkbox or the, uh, the solid instance variable or anything like that. I don't remember if I've talked about that before. I don't think I have. However, that being said, there are also a couple things that this doesn't do very well. And in later videos, I will most probably be, uh, be slightly modifying this code here so that it's, uh, it works a little better in all situations. Uh, for example, this origin thing here, uh, you could say center that and center that for these. And depending on where uh, where your sprite origin is, it might act a little bit weird. Um, if you are, uh, say, 
looking at pixel specific collisions with uh, object whose sprite origins are uh, all over the place. And once again, I will be getting to that later. But uh, that is it for here. <clears throat> that is the basics of solid object logic. Uh, so rate, comment, and subscribe. I will be doing more of these. Probably I'm thinking two a week or so uh, mixed in with my regular uh, video game playing sort of videos. And uh, yeah, I will see you later.